Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. My name's Nick and today, well, I thought we could have a little look through all the seeds that we can grow in June. So let's get started. As warmer weather comes, um, there's less and less things that you can actually grow, which is strange because when I started growing all those years ago, I was... I used to sow everything in summer, like I'd wait until the warm season and be like, oh, that's where I sow everything. And at the very end of the summer is when I used to do my cold crops, um, thinking, oh yeah, they grow really well over the winter, but you don't know, normally just like kind of store things over the winter. And we're kind of looking for something to harvest every day or every week of the year. So it's really important that we do things like cold crops because they store super well and they are able to store in the ground over winter in our zone, which is 9A, hardiness zone. If you don't know your hardiness zone, you can just go ahead and Google it. If you just type in your local town, um, gardening zone. I think there's a red uh, place called, uh, I think it's Gardening Falls, which is a online website that you can write honestly every single like it gives you a week to week breakdown of what you're supposed to be doing um, if you put in your like town and what you're growing which is really 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 effective right so one of the first ones i'm going to talk about is chinese cabbage chinese cabbage is one of my favorite cabbages to grow because i love kimchi kimchi is super good for you it's good for your microbiome which is the bacteria that lives in your bowel helps you dive, di helps you to digest food and it's really important to top it up with probiotics that you get from fermented food so i'm super excited about that one it also absolutely stinks and everybody in my in my department at work absolutely hates it when I bring it in. <laughs> it's yummy though. Okay, so uh, we've got cabbage as well. This one is called Copenhagen Market 2. You June is the last time that you can sow this. You will be getting a September harvest, but it does store rather well. The outside of the cabbage goes a little bit manky and yellow, but as soon as you pull it off, you can see beautiful cabbage. It just literally sits on the side in the garage. Next is a winter cabbage called Bratwicker, which is a really fantastic cabbage. It's like a normal green cabbage that you have. I really want to make some sauerkraut this year. Like I said, I really want to get back into or more into my fermented cabbages and things like that. I love fermented food and it's so good for you, okay? It's a little bit of a learning curve getting used to the flavors of it, but it is very, very good for you. So I really want to have something like this and it's a perfect time because September, October is when the garden kind of slows down. So grab all of those in, store them for winter, and then we can turn the garden around for the winter gardens, which is perfect. Here in the UK, or where I am in the UK, we are in, I told you, 9A, we can actually ha grow 360 days a year. Um, I'm not saying that most things grow in the deepest part of winter, but we have mild mild weather until about November time, and then it gets super chilly. So we can still grow right up until then, and then we're storing things in the ground. Obviously not like cucumbers and things, but like swedes, etc. in the ground. We do have quite a lot of slug pressure at that time of year, so you have to manage that sort of stuff, but it still works out pretty well. Another one, I really like this one. I think it's beautiful. So this one is a January King. You can sow this all the way until the end of the month, and you'll be getting a harvest next March. So it's one of those ones that fill in that hungry gap. I do think it's beautiful though. My partner really loves a purple cabbage and this one I just think is beautiful because it's got like that two-toned leaf where it's green and um, like a blushing almost into um, a purple. And I think that's really, really picturesque. Like that's like front garden material just there. This is one of my favorites as well. This is a sequoia cabbage. I just think it's really pretty. Um, this one, you can either sow in March and April, and then you get a harvest from December to March. It's another one that will fill the hungry gap, which honestly, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to really hate cabbage over the winter. <laughs> we eat so much of it. 
Um, this one I thought was quite interesting. It's an ornamental cabbage, and I got these ones from bargainseeds.com, and they are like bright pink cabbages, white cabbages, and I was thinking that this was a great idea for the front garden because um, you want something to look very decorative there, but something that is edible is great. Okay, so this one is called January King. It's very similar to the other January King. It's a two-toned one. I think it's quite beautiful. Once again, you're going to be sowing this. Um, you can do it from April to June, and then you'll get a harvest roughly about August to December. So it is one that is a little bit earlier than the other. January King, but it is still a very nice one to have. It stores well. This is an autumn cabbage, so it is one that we're going to be sowing roughly about now and have lovely leaves in a few months' time. Each cabbage has a different amount of days, so you can sow them all on the same day and get them all at different times because they either grow faster or slower depending on how big and small they are. This one I think is stunning. We love red cabbage for things like coleslaw and uh, we do, I don't know what it's called, but it's like, you know when you go to a kebab shop, right, and you get the um, red cabbage that's like mushed up with vinegar and all of that sort of stuff in it, lemon juice. We like making that all the time here, so this is the sort of cabbage that we use for it. This one, you sow um, either May or June, and you get the head around about um, September, which is my partner's birthday, so it's a really nice one to have. Store well to, as well. This one is a Golden Ace promo, I think it's called, and you can sow this from January all the way until June, and harvesting it from uh, July to about August. As you can see, it's a lovely white-headed cabbage, but it is green. It is just a nice all-year-round. A uh, nice one that you can have and store over the winter period. This one is Cordo di Grosso, if probably butchering the noise, the sound of that. It's a conical shaped cabbage, which is great. Got this in the sale for 10p. I'm going to hit that sale every year, being Q. Um, in autumn, we'll just sell off all their seeds, which is great. This one you can sow last month and this month, so May and June, and you'll be getting them about September, and I think they look really fab. Like all cabbages, they store really, really well. Next big lot, still in the brassica family. Okay, so another one that we can sow this time of year, in June, is these lovely, I really like this one, it's called Black Magic. Oh, isn't it pretty? I think this one looks absolutely stunning, and you can sow that now and you'll get some cabbage in February, which is great. And these last for ages, you just pull them, pull them, pull them, pull them until they go to seed, which is great. I also have this kale here. I've got a mix of kale, which has that dark magic one, Russian kale, and one called candy, which has got a pink tint to it. It's very pretty. I love kale crisps, so it works out quite nice. These ones I'm actually going to put in today, and these are my Swedes. Swede is an important harvest for us in the winter. We love mashed Swede. Swede in pies, Swede in stews, Swede in mash, roasting them with mashed Swede. So it's an important one for us. You can sow it from April all the way until June to stagger the harvest. And then from November to February, you will be getting a load of Swede. And February, March, January, February, March, April is when we probably eat most of our Swede, obviously on Christmas as well. So it's really important to have this as a harvest very soon. Purple brown spouting broccoli, it's very difficult to say, but it's also something you can be sowing this year, this month, and it is literally only the beginning of the month that you can do this. It is almost finished this season. I have tons of this, so I'm probably not going to sow it. Um, but it is a great one to fill in that hungry gap, and then you'll be having um, tender sprouts from March next year onwards. They do produce a lot. This is thing inside. This is Ru Rudolph. Rudolph is prolific when it comes to sprouting broccoli. I mean, I had so much of it. You just didn't know what to do with it. I love that. And it's funny, isn't it? In the supermarket, sprouting broccoli, right? It's like sprouting broccoli and uh, what are they called courgettes are like. They're so expensive in the supermarket, but like if you grow your own, you're like, oh, I can't stand any more purple sparrow broccoli or any more courgettes. You get so many of them, which makes you wonder why. I guess it's because they're hand picked, I guess. I'm not sure. But it's really, really expensive. And when you grow your own, you get loads and it's delicious. So we've got Calabrese, which is 
the broccoli that you normally get, the cheaper broccoli in the supermarket. I really like this one. If I'm gonna buy broccoli, it's probably gonna be this one. It's an important one for us. Broccoli cut. Broccoli Rab is a great one for us. This one's called 60 Days. I have another one here. This is a little bit of a sour broccoli and it grows super fast. Uh, this is the Rudolph one. This is prolific, absolutely prolific. And this one's called Burbank, which I believe is a white variety. I've got some of that down the allotment growing already, which is exciting. Moving upwards and onwards as we move into the hot weather and it is very hot today. I think it's like 26 or something. It's boiling. That's why I'm not down the allotment now because I am not getting another sunburn. But what I thought would be interesting and great to grow is this particular pak choy. So I've got white delicate. I've got han hanakana. I've got one called Ruby and this is Hannah Canada as well. Okay, these are great. You get so, um, you get baby leaves in 30 days and 60 days you have the whole thing. Chop them up and throw them in a, um, throw, chop them up and throw them into a stir fry. They are amazing, I really enjoy these. And they are just like one of those things that you can have even as baby leaves. I've overwintered these in a greenhouse before. They've worked really well. So you can sow them from March and April and then you have a little break in June, July, the beginning of August, you can sow them and then you can get harvest from early March all the way through until December. So you can have your stir fries and whatever. It's a great source of vitamin C, etc. Baby leaves are really nice, even in salads. So they're really quite delicious. But they're nice, they're ornamental um, vegetables. We like a lot of it, ornamental food, so it's really yummy. I said ornamental, didn't I? Oriental. My teeth back in. Okay, so this is one that's grown really well. We've really got a harvest from it, and it is a winter radish. Winter radishes can be grown from February all the way until August, so they're quite good, and they're quite sizable. They're like the size of a beetroot, and they're very, very nice. Talking about beetroot, um, I have several types of beetroot that I'm going to be growing. I really want to get some pickled beetroot going. I actually really enjoy pickled beetroot. So it'd be nice to have like my very own pickled beetroot, which would be delicious. I, um, when I sort this out, you kind of smell the dill when you're like, pickle season, I can't wait to have pickles. Oh, I love them. Anyway, we've got rainbow mix. I always start off with like one of these general mixes and then move on to like buying the things that I like the most out of the mix. So that's always a great rule of thumb, especially like when you're starting out buying seeds, like you can see, this is just like one month's worth of seeds here that you've seen and I love buying seeds. But like when you start, it's really hard to like buy enough stuff that you can like have a good selection but not bankrupt yourself so these mixes are really good at that so i recommend getting a mix if you ever see them being like oh i don't know what to buy or i don't know what i like just be like right i'm gonna try this and see how it goes so that was a very good one i've also got some of the um ones from that mix for example chirica which is a banded beetroot you probably can't see too much it's like literally stripy they call it candied beetroot where it's like pink and white and if you cut through it's beautiful you can't really ferment that one or pickle it too well because you just lose the coloring of it it goes gray but in a salad that's truly outstanding when you have people come over and you put that out they should love it they go crazy for it because it's something they haven't seen fat and colored potatoes which are outgrowing oh this one's a burpees golden this is a lovely beetroot it's probably one of my favorite beetroots the burpees beetroot is like it's really sweet. If you don't like beetroot and you think it tastes very earthy, try golden beetroot because I find that they are much sweeter and they don't have any of the earthed flavour. Also, if you peel a beetroot, then wash it under the tap and then use it, it loses lots of its earthy flavour, which not everybody finds too palatable. But that one's a very nice sweet variety. And if that one's not sweet enough, try sugar beet. Sugar beet, like, I think I have one here. Avalanche, very sweet. They're called sugar beet for a reason. They actually make sugar out of these. My dog is just, Bailey, Bailey. He's biting up his ball. 
Um, and they're really, really sweet and delicious. So I really like roasted beetroot, pickled beetroot. They're all rather fantastic. You've got chicoria, which is, again, the striped beetroot. These ones are like a traditional one. You've got bull's blood as well, which is a round beetroot. But this one is called cylindrica, which I can always struggle to say. You can grow this bad boy from March all the way until July. July till round about October, you'll be getting a harvest, which is great. Um, and it's just a long, long, thin beetroot, which is great. If you're making pick pickled beetroot, that's like ideal because you've got lots of like the same size slices, which is very exciting, I know. Got another um, rainbow beetroot here, just shows that I don't ever look to see if I've got any new ones. Got balder, which I'm pretty sure it is an F1 hybrid, but I think, I want to say this is a red beetroot. I could be wrong. Uh, there's another packet of cylindrica because you can never run out. Okay, another really important harvest. I love making chicken stock. Chicken stock is, I was going to say my life, that sounds, it's my life. No, I love making like, when we roast animals, uh, animals? Not animals, that'd be weird. When we roast meat and we left over with the bones, I hate throwing them away because what a waste. So what I do is I make them into chicken broth or lamb broth, you name it. And one of the key ingredients is leeks. Leeks really put it up to the next level. So I really like having these around when I want to do that. So I just throw in like a leek or two into the broth and have it boiling for a little while. Onions, onions, uh, these uh, black pepper and what they call cloves. I love putting them in, boiling them right down, and carrots. They make it mwah, makes it really good. And then what I do is I go ahead and just put it in the freezer in jars, take it out, let it defrost, and just go ahead and chuck it into uh, whatever dish that I'm doing. Normally gravies or soups and stews in the winter. So, I got these in a sale, they were 10p each. These ones, I haven't opened yet, they're from Simply Seeds. Simply Seeds is a really, really good little seed company and you can get like loads of seeds for a decent price. So these ones, the last time that you can actually sow them is June, so I'll probably do that. These ones you can sow from March until July, so it's a little longer on these ones. And you'll get them in October and December. You can actually just literally, legitly stick these in a bucket and they will store. But what I'll do is like I said, I'm gonna make them into chicken broths and stuff like that. I save up all the bones and then when I get a collection of them, I sound really weird, don't I? I have huge, like a huge stock pot and I'll just boil it until the, um, the the bones just crumble and then all the nutrients have gone out into the broth and you can either drink that like in a cup like bone broth or you can use it in a soup and stew recipe and it's really tasty the last time i made was french onion soup and it was amazing because i had some onions that were a little bit squishy. Okay, so this one is something that we don't really think about, but it's like one of the backbones of home cooking. When you're cooking at home, you're not using anything like that really like, like flavorings and stuff like that. So you need something to like really make it tick. And my doctor reckons that I eat too much salt. So instead of putting salt that I really love on things, I use things like herbs to make it tasty instead. So, um, I mean, like, who who wants delicious salty food? I mean, unhealthy salty food. So, yeah, this is a compromise that we have. Apparently, I'm not allowed to put any salt on any of my food. So. I know, I know. Thank you for your for your tears. Um, so, first one, my favourite is dill. I love dill on the basis that I absolutely adore dill. I adore dill. <laughs> I adore dill pickles. I love the pill dill pickles so much. So it's a really important harvest for us. And just like, literally, if I smell dill, oh, it just smells like summer to me. Like, I have so many memories of this smell in the kitchen. And my kitchen's a sun trap as well. So like, on the hottest day of the year, boiling and canning and, oh, it sounds miserable, but I, I always enjoy it. Okay, basil is another really important one for us because we, we grow a lot of tomatoes and basil and tomatoes are like best friends and we 
can a load of stock, sorry, we can a load of tomato, like basic tomato sauce with this, uh, things like peppers, onions, uh, carrot, mushrooms, like whatever vegetables we have on hand, we chuck it in and we throw some basil in it. Sometimes it's just basil, sometimes it's a mix, like it's literally whatever we have on hand. And as we go through the summer, we go, like there's different varieties. I've only got, out of, do you remember when I did that what's in my pantry sort of tour? I've only got, I think it's six jars left of tomatoes. Crazy. I'm hoping the tomatoes come soon because that's only three weeks worth. Just saying. Okay, so that one's really important. Parsley is another one. We love pie and mash in this house. Love making pies, mince meat pies. I don't know, like when I say mince meat pies, not sweet ones. I mean like literally like minced beef pies. And I love to have them with parsley sauce, which is called liquor, um, which I know what you're thinking, mm, yum, parsley and fish sauce on top of a beef pie it sounds amazing but it really is me and my partner we grew up eating um pie and mash when we were younger and we don't no longer live near pie and mash shops so well not not conveniently anyway so we make it for ourselves and it's really yummy another one that i have which my partner absolutely hates but i love this one it's a red leaf basil i'm pretty sure that this one is called opal but it doesn't say I'm going to tell you it's called Opal, and if you don't believe me, please let me know I'm wrong down below, that's fine. Um, this one is great, it does leave like a little bit of a, like it looks like you've got bits of like, you know when you burn the pack, you know when you're cooking you forget about it and you like, kind of like burn it, but it's not, it doesn't taste burn, but you get then little black floaty bits in it. That's exactly the experience you get from that, so I know you're all going to run out and get it. More basil, because I like basil coriander another really important herb i love drying herbs so this is some dried herb that i've got and what i want to do is fill up an entire jar of the herbs and i have them all the way through the winter so i'm like constantly taking little bits of herbs so this is what i did today this is my achievement today i did this which doesn't look very much but i promise you it was um and i i'm put away my rosemary and my time got about this much time as well but you just remember that throughout the year i'll fill it out and i have an entire huge jar of um what they call bay leaves because you know you can't do a stew without them and i like bay leaves quite a lot so we have all of those i'm gonna do sage and stuff when it starts flowering it just looks too beautiful to cut fennel fennel is another one i love star anise so fennel is a really good one to have between seven and 21 days you can have a harvest depending on how big they are they're great you can pretty much harvest them until october which is fantastic um another one is red vein sorrel i don't really know how to use this too much you can put it in stews and soups i'm going to try that i have some of it it's perennial sage i actually grew sage from from seed and my sage at the moment is flowering oh my days sage flowers are just so beautiful they're like really stunning i i'm like looking at all my herbs thinking you guys look fabulous they just do they look absolutely lovely got lemon balm uh, oh sorry lemon basil which is basil tasting but a little bit lemony which is really lovely and it's quite a nice thing to have in like i told you we eat a lot of tomatoes during the winter it's really nice we like to I don't know what it is, I've kind of like made up the recipe, but it's what we call fajita soup, which sounds gross, but it is like tomato -y soup with like beef and beans and like fajita spices in it, it's really nice. Um, some more coriander, we actually eat quite a bit of coriander, I love coriander seeds as well, so that's a nice one. We've also got one called, what, another coriander and chicory. Chicory is a really nice one to have to overwinter and force in the winter. So we've also got some onions, we've got some, um, I believe these ones are called, uh, they're called North Holland Blooded and they're gorgeous, they're red spring onions, something special and you've got these ones are called Deep Purple and they're a deep purple variety of spring onion. I think they're really pretty. 
so I'm going to be sewing them very, very soon. You can sew them all the way until July. So I'm hopefully going to be pulling out my garlic and replacing my garlic bed with these and some, boom, carrots. These are the only carrots I have here because I tend to take them down the allotment because, well, I sew most of them there. I sew them directly. I don't start them off anywhere else. So these are the carrots that I got from my calendar. This is the last month I can sew these. So they do take a little while to sew. And also these ones, beans, beans, good for your heart. The more you eat, the more good they are for you. So these are beans that I saved last year. I grew these, these are my seeds. I shall name them Barry. No, they are Sunburst, I think. Um, you can see I've labelled them really well, so well done for that. Um, so I grew these over the allotment last year. So they're they're special. Why have I got these? These are French. Oh, these are also a bush bean. These ones are called Goldfield. These are a climbing bean. They're little beans, and they have like little. They're both French beans. This one here are front climbing French bean. They're a flat one. They're called Ariota de Lanco do Franco. And I know with my accent, apps it just heightens the pronunciation, doesn't it? So these ones are a dwarf Harriet bean. So they have cute little beans. I'll show you. Their beans are so sweet. And I've sewn loads of these. Look how sweet that bean is. Look at the bean. Look at it. Very sweet. You see it? You can. Brilliant. I think they look absolutely fab. But look how gorgeous those bad boys are. Very nice. You just don't know what to do. You don't know whether to keep them for beans or for the outside bean yeah, it's called a bean, isn't it? I don't know whether you keep it for dry beans or the normal bean, but you know they both look absolutely fab and you can do both with that variety. Next one is called Sunshine when she's gone. It's called Sunshine. And Sunshine is another French variety of bean. These are, I think they're a climbing bean. Off the top of my head, they're a climbing bean. They're French though. They don't really like runner beans. They like French beans. These bad boys are purple ones. I think they're called Purple Queen. I am right. And you can sew them all the way until July. So every two weeks now, guys, so you have a harvest coming in. They freeze really well as well. So you want to stick them in the freezer all the way up until October and then freeze them. If you freeze them, you have them all year round. <laughs> okay. I saw a video the other day on YouTube and I see it and it was um, salted beans. Oh. I was like, I've got to try that. I could really hear my doctor going, you don't need more salt, you don't need more salt. He doesn't know though, does he? I'm sure I can eat more salt. Okay, so, French climbing bean called Cobra. Cobra is a really cool variety and a really cool name. They're a white bean, French variety, and they're very pretty. These ones are a multi so I grew these over the allotment. I think these are a climb, yep, they're a climbing bean. Climbing bean, you just need a bit of support in there. Rabbits love them though, so it's a really nice one to grow. If you've got rabbits on your plot, it's a great one to feed the rabbits. I'm joking, they will eat them anyway. Right. So, I have a mysterious pack of brassicas that I still don't know what they are. Who knows? And the last brassica dun, 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 is this one here. It doesn't have a picture. It's called, oh, it's, called, it's got a long name. What is it? It's Phyla D. Silica. No. I know what you're thinking. My pronunciation is amazing. This is a... Cauliflower. This is a cauliflower and the cauliflower is purple. It's a really nice one. I didn't expect that. My dog just walked in here with a ball on his face. You alright? He's very hot. He struggles in the heat. This one's called All Year Round. It's a really nice one. It goes all year round. I think you can sew it all the way up until June. It's hardly all year round, but you get like a harvest most of the season. It's exciting. There's that more of the uh, D. Sanka Violeto, so it's slightly different. And then this one is Rosso 
Otto Bino, which is really pretty. Um, not just the way I plant it and ruin it, but it is one of those cute cucumbers. It's one of those cauliflowers that are like the same shape again and again and again. I can't remember what that's called. It's one of those. Now, ba 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 ba. This is a category that people always forget about, and people don't really they take it for granted, and then they start crying because nothing pollinates properly. That's right. It's flowers. Grow some sweet Williams. Sweet Williams, you can sow. This is the last month you can sow, and you'll get some in November. Lupins. I generally said to myself, why are you bothering with lupins, Nick? Because they're never going to grow. They're very, very hard to grow. So I sowed these, and they all came up. Beginner's luck, I know. Uh, these ones are called Indigo Forget Me Nots. I love forget me not. I know that they are technically a weed, but my nan used to grow them and they remind me of my nan and pollinators like them. We can plant them now and you'll get flowers next year. And I like me forget me nots. I won't forget them. Not at all. Uh, the next ones are called a wallflower. I like wallflowers. They're nice. I like pretty much every flower. I like just to go into the garden and have my garden literally humming. I've got a butterfly mix here of flowers because, like I said, if you don't know what you're growing, grow some flowers. These ones, oh, sen sensation. I hate this packet because it always makes me inch. But there's just different varieties. They're different colours. And you can grow those pretty much up until August, I believe. These ones, July. And these ones, up until July. Larkspur, I've been growing these for a few years now, not very successfully, but I'm going to go give them a go. I will hopefully get some flowers in September, and you sow them from March all the way up until October, which is exciting. Foxglove. Foxglove is a really interesting um, flower, actually, because foxglove is a, a medicine for heart defects. Uh, don't eat foxglove so because it is madly madly poisonous but it's interesting it comes from this plant don't eat it uh foxglove is poisonous but they are beautiful aren't they and i've got up to the point where my daughter is a little bit older now and if i tell her don't eat any of the flowers she won't so that's good we don't ever eat flowers in this house on the basis that we grow things like foxglove and i believe lupins are poisonous as well um, because I don't want her to get confused. My daughter knows that anything within the garden bed that's not a flower is edible. So I keep it that anything in there is edible. I know that you do have things like, oh, there's a root vegetable that you grow under the ground. I can't remember what it's called, but it has beautiful peas on it. And the peas is what you grow and then you harvest the, hoop, the vegetable underneath and it is deadly poisonous the peas. We don't grow things like that because we've got a little eight year old running around and if it was slightly different and we had a younger child running around then obviously um, I probably wouldn't grow things like foxglove. Just bear that in mind. Back onto edibles. So, got things like mustard. I absolutely love whole grain mustard and I'd like to grow enough mustards to get the seeds for whole grain mustard one day. This one here is Swiss chard, I love Swiss chard when it's young and tender in a salad. Um, I think you can grow them all the way up, uh, sorry, you can harvest them from July all the way into October, so that's quite nice. It's getting in salad season. I'm gonna probably sow all of my spinach this year. These are very, 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 very old seeds. They probably are not viable. Uh, this one is called frilly leaf. I do like a textured salad. I'm going to have like a nicer side salad. I like to have like a big variety in there. Um, <laughs> this is Robin Rocket. My daughter calls this old lady salad because my mum loves it. And she's a little bit rude. And apparently it's related to stevia, which is interesting. Plant's name is Eureka Stevia, so it must be in the same family, which is interesting. Stevia. I'm actually growing stevia at the moment and it is like, I ate one leaf, right? And it is like mind, like hit you over the head, ab abusively sweet. It's very, very sweet. So just bear that in mind if you do do it. I think one leaf was enough for like 6,000 meals. But yeah, um, this one's quite interesting to have, I feel. And it's nice to have this. It's very peppery in a salad or I prefer it in a sandwich. 
And this one I found absolutely fascinating. It is a red iceberg lettuce. It's not something I've seen before, so I had to buy it. And it is beautiful, unusual frilled, frilled, an unusual red frilled lettuce, which is lovely. I actually am going to keep these for heads so that we can experience them all together, I guess. And you can sow them now and you'll be getting some in October, so every two weeks, yeah? And go back in time and do that every two weeks. Um, you've got things like cress. Cress is a good one to have. That's all year round. You can have indoors, obviously. Whoops, a daisy. This one is a peppery um, one. This is very peppery. You want like one tiny leaf for a thousand salads. And this is a curly variety. You can sow this all the way up until August. It's really pretty. I've red, grown a red variety of this, and it was absolutely gorgeous just harvest one that's in the fridge because we have quite a few sandwiches throughout the week um, my partner eats sandwiches for work every day so it's a nice one ah this is another one that's called bright and spicy it's very spicy it's got lots of mustard in it this one is one of my favorite lettuce actually it's called all year round it is a butterhead lettuce it's really like loose and lovely and it's just really great it's probably my favorite lettuce for eating in a salad um because it's just so nice to eat it's not bitter i find some salads bitter and i think it's because you don't put enough water on it but this one just doesn't go bitter which is really nice you can sow this all year round huh? but the mostly from yeah all the way around just inside or outside it swaps around at the moment we can sow it ba, 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 outside until october which is exciting this is another one which is a loose let leafed le loose leaved lettuce. That's actually really hard to say. Say it three times. Go on. Loose leaf lettuce. Loose leaf lettuce. Loose leaf lettuce. It's hard to say. Um, and basically from March all the way until July, you can have this every two weeks again. Um, and I kind of like. Okay, so like it's been a minute since I spoke to you last. My camera is really hot yesterday. It got up to like twenty eight degrees. So my camera was indoors, obviously, with you were with me. But, yeah, it just wasn't happy and it turned off. Because when it's particularly, it's a Nikon, so every time it gets too hot, it turns off. So I went away. I did another video that you'll probably see in a couple of days' time. I went out. Um, my camera then died. I came home, sorted my ducks out. So I've, like, had a whole life. But for you, it's like a second. But um, I thought I'd continue this because I've only got a few more to do. So let's get started. Okay, so we have iceberg lettuce. This is the normal iceberg lettuce. This is the one that my partner absolutely adores. So we grow this bad boy and we're going to keep that as a head lettuce. Got perennial spinach. This is doing really well over the allotment already. It's as the name intends, has a really, really long growing season, which is really good because spinach goes to seed and this one doesn't do that regularly. So you can actually sow this from March all the way to July and then you'll have a really, really good harvest from June to March. So it goes over that hungry gap, which once again, we do want something that will um, fill up the hungry gap. You see what I mean? So you have something to eat fresh because it's all well and good eating things that have been stored. But you just, just like want something that's got like a crunch to it or, you know, like you can have in a sandwich or something like that. Mmm, beetroot juice. Mmm. Yummy. Last but not least, this one is beautiful. I do have this growing over the allotment at the moment. It's absolutely stunning. You can sow this from March all the way into July. Every two weeks is best, and you have like continuous harvest. Um, and then you get one, um, you get heads or loose leaves from March all the way until October, and it's very pretty. Here's it. I think it's a very nice one. I like the variegated leaves, I think they look really good. So, thank you so much for watching, and it's amazing. We're almost up to a thousand subscribers. It is 
madness and you actually see this video today this is me in the morning it's about eight o'clock in the morning on a sunday i know it's quite late in the day i've i like wanted to sit down and do this video but then i said made breakfast and i wanted to clean the kitchen you know what it's like so i'm gonna edit this bad boy today and post it up oh, i think it's madness i really do but thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time and if you haven't done already please consider subscribing i'll see you next time bye bye okay <laughs> Also, I... <laughs> like Nebraska family.